So, quick show of hands, and uh, honestly, uh, a answer honestly, please. Uh, how many people in the class really started looking at the programming assignments until, say, last, uh, before, say, last Monday? Started how many people started doing anything significant before last Monday? <laughs> I mean, use use your own judgment here. I'm I'm basically trying to. So, I I gather the the programming assignment was more difficult than I had anticipated. This is this is a lesson for both of us. Um, I I will make further assignments easier, but at the same time, I expect you to start the assignment more than the weekend before. Um, I mean, e even accounting for some level of uncertainty, that's about a quarter of the class that raised their hands just now. Th this is a 400 level class. I'm expecting you to commit time to it. Yeah? Uh, so, uh, it's That is what I'm going to do. So um, there are two. The syllabus is going to get changed in the following. Uh, the, three things will change. Um, so first off, uh, to those groups who actually uh, were able to um, get something in, uh, their checkpoint one is going to get a fairly heavy curve. Um, if you're able to get at least two points on checkpoint one, that will be equivalent to a 70. Eight points on checkpoint one will be equivalent to 100. And uh, linear interpolation in between the two. Um, second, checkpoints one, two, and three, um, I will take the highest two grades that you get on those three checkpoints. Um, I will drop the lowest. That will constitute, uh, that means, by the way, that the, the two highest grades constitute 50% of your grade. And third, um, I had originally planned to, put, uh, planned to make checkpoints one, uh, excuse me, checkpoints uh, two and three. Uh, I had made certain claims about what was going to happen in those checkpoints. Uh, those are going to get revised. Um, checkpoints two will be, uh, checkpoints two and three um, will be, uh, will together cover um, some subset of what the original uh, checkpoints two and three were meant to cover. And so what I want to uh, deal with today, what I want to uh, cover today, um, I'll be releasing jar files and Java docs for a working uh, checkpoint one implementation uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, you will be able to use, for checkpoint two, you will be able to use any, um, any component of, uh, of those, um, any component from checkpoint one. Uh, if you want to uh, and disassemble parts of it and use it in your own implementation to replace parts that don't work, great. Uh, if you want to use it entirely outright and just start fresh from scratch, again, that's also, uh, that's also a reasonable approach. Any questions or concerns? Yeah? In regards to uh, the evaluator solution set for check on one, are you going to wait until after partials can no longer be made for late submissions? Um, I will not wait. I will simply uh, I will simply uh, enforce. So the the submission system has the ability to uh, different submissions have different uh, library support. Um, because I will be releasing the code as a jar file rather than as Java files, um, you will simply not be able to use the solution for further submissions to checkpoint one. Is that the tracer? Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. If we did score low on checkpoint one, can 
we still take advantage today of the late penalty? Yeah. Um, so you can get, uh, as of today, I believe you can still get, an, uh, still get in principle, eight points. Um, the rest of the week, you can still take advantage of, of some of that. It will get progressively harder. Further questions? All right. Um, so before I begin, checkpoint two, um, in its simplified form, requires you to understand and be comfortable with one subject that some of you may consider somewhat intimidating. So I'd like to take a little bit of time to make it hopefully a little less intimidating. Show of hands, who doesn't feel intimidated? Who, who is confident in attacking recursion? Okay, this is about half of the class, I'll, I'll take it. Um, okay, so recursion, is, I know it's a scary word, um, and it takes getting used to thinking about it, but one easy way to, or one, one way to think about it is to, to break your problems down into smaller chunks. Um, so we talked about translating, uh, we talked about translating uh, SQL, and specifically translating uh, nested subqueries. So, let's bump the word up a little bit. And So here's a straightforward nested subquery. Uh, it's not actually doing anything interesting with the nesting. But if I want to translate this, if I want to go from this to a relational algebra operator tree, then even before I do anything with the outer query, I can look at this one query in isolation. From the perspective of translating this one query here, I don't care what that looks like. I don't care what that looks like. I don't care what anything outside of these parentheses looks like. All I need to do is translate this one query. Once I've translated this one query, then I can ignore what's inside the parentheses. I can forget about what's inside the parentheses and translate the outer query as if it was just an ordinary SQL query. And this whole thing was just one big relation S. So recursion, far from being a scary thing, is, is basically a way of being lazy. It's, if you can break your problem down into two chunks, this inside bit and this outside bit, then you don't actually need to care about what's going on uh, on the outside when you're looking at the inside. You don't need to care about what's going on inside when you're looking at the outside part. Okay. 
Now keep that idea in mind uh, as we go through uh, the rest of today's lecture. Um, the idea of recursion isn't, it's, at least from our perspective here, it's just uh, a way of focusing ourselves on a specific task and using the solution to a specific task, a specific small task, generalizing it to uh, a more complex structure. Like here, we took our solution here and generalized it to a more complex structure. Okay. Um, all right. So let's start with, uh, let's start from the, uh, the beginning. Um, so before I get into an actual solution, I wanted to spend a little bit of time going over uh, the solution, uh, the checkpoint uh, one uh, solution that you'll be getting for checkpoint two. Um, so here's the Java doc that um, will be part of the, the distribution. You basically get uh, a couple of different things. Um, I'll go through each of them in, in turn. Um, the bulk of, of the code is in this uh, plan package. Uh, and the plan package, the key thing here, is this operator interface. So the operator interface um, is an iterator. Um, it's a way of looking at the relational, or it's an interface that allows you to look at the relational algebra tree both as a tree and uh, as an iterator. And you'll need that for uh, checkpoint two. Um, so the key thing here is that if we're going to look at things as a tree, we need to be able to look at them uh, in, uh, we need to be able to look at the structure of the tree. So we've got uh, three interfaces uh, below operator, or sorry, three uh, abstract classes below operator, uh, binary operators, leaf operators, and unary operators. Uh, so leaf operators are just the, the end of the tree. Uh, what have you encountered so far that's a leaf operator? Well, tables. tables, yeah. Um, unary operators take one thing below them. Uh, what have you encountered so far that's a unary operator? Projection. Selection, projection, aggregation, yeah. Um, order by and limit are also both unary operators. And what about binary operators? Join and cross product and Union, thank you. So um, for the purposes of this assignment, uh, there are two classes um, that are binary interfaces, cross product, and union. Uh, leaf operators, uh, there's, I can click on it, uh, file scan, and I have this thing called null source that you can probably ignore, but it's a way of getting one record uh, out of uh, one record, and rare cases where you actually need that, uh, probably not for this assignment. Um, aggregate, limit, projection, selection, and uh, sort are all unary operators. Uh, questions so far? Okay, um, I'd like to uh, point out three, spe uh, excuse me, uh, four specific methods um, on uh, various operator uh, classes that might be particularly useful um, uh, to you. So uh, the first thing is the operator class has uh, get next, open, and close. Those are essentially the, the same, the iterator methods that I've been describing in class so far. Um, there's also a two string method uh, which you can use to print out the structure of the operator. So it'll basically print out a relational algebra tree using indentation to note, uh, denote uh, uh, in, uh, to denote how much uh, uh, what needs to happen. Um, the other thing on here is a get schema method that'll give you the set of columns that uh, that particular operator will generate. The it, it'll give you uh, a list of columns where every column corresponds to the um, 
Irving col uh, column's position corresponds to its uh, position in, in the array that you get from get next. Uh, question so far? Yeah. So I would like to know this for the selection. Would there be other things that would be stored in expression? Right. So for so this is the generic operator, and then the specific operator classes, which you can use instance of to find. Um, let's take a look. Uh, that you mentioned selection. So selection has a couple of additional methods that allow you to access, uh, for example, the expression. Um, projection has a method that will allow you to access the columns and so forth. Um, one particular method that might be of use uh, is, uh, so uh, the select operator has a uh, method that will um, specifically give you each of the conjunctive clauses. Um, so if you have A and B and C and D, then uh, this conjunctive clauses method uh, will return uh, a list A, comma, B, comma, C, comma, D, comma, E, and so forth. We'll see how to, uh, we'll encounter that a little bit later today. Um, uh, all right, any questions so far? Okay, so each of the operator classes will give you just uh, will give you access to the information that you need. Um, okay, so the plan uh, the plan package is the relational algebra expressions. Uh, then we have a data package here that contains uh, tools for dealing with uh, data values or primitive values specifically. Um, and the most of that is, shouldn't be too relevant for you. Uh, the two things that will be relevant are tuple eval, um, which has a method to set the current tuple uh, and a method to evaluate, uh, since it inherits from eval, uh, it can evaluate arbitrary expressions based on this tuple. Uh, the other thing is this aggregate impl interface, which uh, provides uh, generic implementations of all of the aggregates, uh, all of the aggregate expressions. Uh, so the idea is that you create one of these implementations, and there's uh, subclasses, uh, average, count, max, min, sum, etc. Uh, you instantiate one of those. And you keep calling update to uh, insert a new record. And then you call uh, get value to get whatever value it's just computed. Yeah? Sorry, where did the tuple go next? Oh, sorry. So um, each of these gets instantiated either with an expression or uh, something similar. So for example, uh, sum, you create a new sum by passing in an expression. So this would be, uh, let's say I wanted to do sum of a plus 1. You'd pass in the expression representing a plus 1. So this is basically whatever is inside uh, the function expression that appears in, uh, in the SQL statement. Does that? This is only used for aggregation. This is only used for aggregation. Oh, okay. um, so it, uh, the. The tuple eval is whatever tuple eval gets provided. But uh, this essentially all gets used by the aggregate um, operator. So, is that just the distinguish between like aware expression and operation expression? Uh, it's a way. So the the aggregate oper each aggregate operator. Um, uh, each of these aggregate implementations gives you a way to, it keeps the current state of the aggregate. So for example, the sum aggregate operator, uh, the, the sum aggregate implementation um, would give you, um, Uh, you probably wouldn't be able to do that. Um, 
but the, so the, basically the this this keeps around the intermediate states of um, the aggregate implementation keeps around the intermediate state for an aggregate value. So if you're computing a sum, you instantiate one sum aggregate implementation, and uh, every time you call update, it adds whatever the expression evaluates to to its current sum. And then eventually you can call get value, which returns whatever the current sum is. Is that any other questions? Okay, um, odds are initially you won't need to deal with that too much. Um, there's a class that will translate from SQL to relational algebra. And uh, there is, uh, there are a handful of utility classes. And the two that might be particularly useful are set utils, uh, which fill in for some gaps that Java um, has left open. Um, specifically, you can't do set difference, intersection, or union uh, in raw Java. Um, so there's an implementation of set difference, uh, set intersection, and union. Um, and the other thing is some utilities for keeping track of arrays of primitive values. So comparisons, hash uh, codes, um, and stringification. Questions so far? OK. Um, so the last component here, um, which is uh, the last component, which is not actually part of checkpoint one, but might help get you started on checkpoint two, um, is recursion. Um, so when we're looking at a relational algebra expression, So we can do better, right? OK, I know the project was killer, but a little more enthusiasm here. We can do better, right? Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. Thank you. Um, so let's say that this gets uh, parenthesized as follows. So this tree basically ends up looking like select uh, of cross of u, cross with, cross t, cross with, cross of r, and s. Now, uh, who, re who remembers uh, what the first step is in, in optimizing this expression? All right, so we can split off that selection predicates. Um, then? Uh, what do you mean by joining? You can replace, you can start replacing selection across product. Okay, so I can take two select, I can take a selection and cross product and turn them into a joint. So in this case, let's say the t dot c for the u dot c. When I did this, uh, when, when this uh, uh, 
uh, modification got uh, changed, what did I care about? What did I need to see in order to apply this up, this specific optimization? Did I care about any of that? Did I care about any of this? No. All I cared about was that there was this cross product of this thing on the left hand side and or left hand side and this thing on the right hand side. Um, the thing on the right hand side had a C in it. The thing on the left hand side had a C in it. Uh, could join the two. So all I needed to look at was a selection sitting on top of a cross product. So let's say I had some way, some way to uh, just go through the entire tree, this entire structure, and find everywhere that I had a selection sitting on top of a cross product. You could basically find every instance that could possibly be optimized in this way, and I could actually optimize it right then and there. So that's what plan rewrite is, and we'll go through a more concrete uh, an example to make this a little more concrete. Uh, but the idea is that you uh, you override this apply method, and then you call it on any sort of operator tree uh, in, in operate, uh, an operator tree here, and it's going to go through the entire tree and call apply once for every single node in that tree. And it'll give you a chance to return a new value for that node in the tree. So the return value of apply is going to get uh, is going to replace whatever is in the in the node itself. Question: What's the next step here? Yeah. Okay, so if I can realize that A and B only apply on the left-hand side, I could take this entire selection predicate, dump it down the left-hand side, make my life a lot simpler, repeat the process. Again, did I care about, what did I care about here? What did I need to see? So I needed to, okay, yeah, selection and in this case a join. Um, I'd actually advocate doing these things in the opposite order, uh, push down the selections first and then do the join. Um, but yeah, essentially selection on top of what essentially amounts to a cross product and what I really cared about, I needed to see something on the left-hand side, and I needed to know that that thing had A and B in its schema. I needed to see something on the right-hand side, and I needed to know that whatever was on the right-hand side didn't have A and B in its schema. And knowing that, I was able to push down uh, selection uh, into the left-hand side. So that's... Essentially, what we're going to uh, what we're going to do uh, as uh, a little bit of an example here. Um, but before I get to the example, uh, here is uh, here is essentially what you're going to get. Um, you want to see that bigger, smaller? All right, so what you're going to get is essentially a directory with, um, okay, um, then let's try this. You're going to get a directory which has um, A little bit bigger. All right. Um, so you're going to get a directory that has a uh, that's going to have uh, documentation, and that's going to have uh, 
jar with the checkpoint one um, solution in it. Um, you're also going to get a uh, main method that will show you how to, you're essentially going to get the main method for, uh, for the checkpoint one solution. Um, so most of this, you can, most of this is fairly well uh, documented with comments. Um, I'm sure most of you have something that uh, creates uh, a table um, and that essentially takes the table and loads it into, um, loads it into the, the database. Um, for select, um, we also have, uh, where are we? So it's, there's a little bit of debugging output here that you'll be able to access using command line switches. Um, and the big thing is that the translator, uh, this, this translator component can basically take the select statement, convert it into a uh, relational algebra tree, which it'll print out here. And most of what you're going to be doing for checkpoint two is going to live in these lines of code here, um, where you're essentially going to be given a uh, the relational algebra trees, or well, you're going to be given select statements, and using the checkpoint one code, you'll be able to convert them into relational algebra trees. Uh, but essentially, what you'll be asked to do is improve the performance of, uh, of the checkpoint one solution. And the bulk of what that is going to entail is these types of rewrites. All right, let's uh, actually take a look at what this um, ends up doing. Compile that. Um, for your convenience, there's also going to be a shell script uh, that will invoke uh, that'll invoke the uh, program with. Uh, you're going to get a, a shell script that's basically going to simplify invoking the uh, the main function for uh, the main class, uh, the main method of the main class um, for your submission. So, uh, so I have a few sanity uh, check queries here um, that are the same ones that you'd get from, um, these are basically the same queries that uh, are linked off the, uh, the project, the checkpoint one uh, description. So there's one query here, uh, RST, and it's a three-way natural join. Um, essentially this query, but simplified by one step. R join S join T, where R is joined on R and S are joined on B, S and C are joined on C. Now, if I run one of the command line flags that you're going to get uh, that is is in the main file is test, which is essentially just going to uh, it's going to run the optimization process and the translation process without actually doing anything. Without actually running the the uh, query itself, and this is essentially what you'll get uh, with the uh, project select. Uh, excuse me, the relational algebra tree. So as you can see, the ra uh, t.d have been translated into uh, into um, a projection 
statement, the uh, r.b and s.c uh, have been translated into a selection operator, and then you have two cross product operators that sit over file scans. Questions so far? All right. Now, right now the optimizer isn't doing anything particularly interesting. Uh, so the uh, right now the optimizer isn't doing anything particularly interesting. So the uh, optimized plan is identical. Let's let's do one improvement on this uh, as a simple example. Um, let's do this uh, selection pushdown optimization. All right, let's go through the process of, of defining that. So how do we how do we approach that? Well, one starting point would be this uh, plan rewrite uh, class. would be this plan rewrite class. So let's see how that should come about. Um, all right, so plan rewrite, basically in order to implement plan rewrite, we need one, uh, one specific method. Uh, we need an apply method that takes in an operator and returns another operator. And the idea, what, uh, what this plan rewrite class uh, gives us, is that it's basically going to call this apply method once on this node, once on this node, once on this node, once on this node. Essentially, it'll visit every single node in the tree exactly once. Um, you also need to tell it whether uh, you want to do the optimization top down or bottom up. Um, in this case, we want uh, top down. Or whether you, you do the traversal top down or bottom yeah. Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, no. Thank you. Uh, is that better? Yeah. Okay. kind of picked a random theme for me. I haven't had a chance to change it. Uh, okay, so where are we? Right, uh, so what do we do? Well, we're visiting every single node in, in the tree. Um, so what are we looking for if we want to do, if we want to push down these uh, selections? Okay, and what else? Okay, so how are, how would those uh, how would we expect uh, those two to be related? Okay, so we'd like to see a selection sitting on top of a cross product. All right, well that's easy enough to to do. Uh, so first, let's define some default behavior. Uh, if we don't no, if we don't have any better way of rewriting uh, that particular node, we just return the same thing exactly as it was uh, when we got it. Um, so we're looking for selections sitting on top of cross products. Um, how do we detect whether operator is a selection? Instance of. So we can use instance of uh, to figure out whether the um, operator is a selection. If it is, we can cast it. Uh, and then what are, what, else, what are we looking for next? We, uh, so we know that the selection is going to be, uh, so we, we're looking for a selection. What's the second part? Cross product. So we want the child of the selection uh, to be a cross product. All right, so now we need to do a little bit of disassembly here. Uh, so 
while we don't actually care about what's on the left-hand side, we don't actually care about exactly what's on the right-hand side, we do want to kind of separate them out. So let's disassemble uh, the cross product. Now the cross product as a binary node is going to have two components, uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So now we've got three operators here. We've got the select, we've got the cross product, uh, and then we've got the left-hand side of the cross product and the right-hand side of the cross product. Okay. So, you might remember a little while ago I mentioned that there was a handy utility method on the selection operator that gave you all of the conjunctive clauses on the selection operator. Now that's helpful because we want to be able to deal with we don't actually know what we can do with each of those uh, conjunctive clauses. Some of them might have to stay on top. Some of them might be able to push down uh, below. We might be able to push down below. So let's iterate over all of those clauses. OK. So now, this, is, this clause, let's actually uh, see what happens. Um, all right, and let's call that and the last thing we need, so we need to do one more thing. Um, so there is an optimizer class that will automatically apply all of a list of optimizations uh, if you like. And let's see what happens. Um, and I'm missing a closed brace. All right, so as you can see, um, we basically, uh, what we're getting at this point is the two equality predicates that we're testing for. Uh, R dot B equals S dot B, S dot C equals T dot C. What? Yeah. Say again? Oh, right, so you're getting you're getting an and here. Uh, R dot B equals S dot B and S dot C equals T dot C. Um, what this utility method uh, get conjunctive or sorry conjunctive clauses will do is it'll break a, a chain of ands into a list, so you can look at each clause individually. Um, if there's an or, you can do so. Uh, if you have an or in your expression, that's a lot harder to optimize. Mainly because you can take uh, an and and break it up into a, a separate selects. You can't do that. You can kind of sort of do it with an or in unions, uh, but that gets a lot murkier. Uh, the case of ends is specifically a, both a common case and something that can be handled easily, which is why that's there. Does that address your question? Any other questions? OK. Um, so we have each of these clauses. Now, what can we actually do with those clauses? So here, uh, let's say that you're just doing this from the, the very beginning. We have r.a uh, equals s.a, s.b equals t.b, and t.c equals u.c. So if we're looking at r.a equals s.a, what can we do with that? What are, uh, for any given clause, what are, what are my, my possibilities, and how do I decide between them? Hmm? Schema. OK, how would I use the schema to decide what I can do with it? Well, we're, right now, we're, we're not looking at the, uh, any of the couples. 
right now we're just looking at things that are universally true. Um, uh, for any relation to for expression. So when we say selection pushdown, what are we? So we implicitly have at least some notion that we can take a selection sitting on top of a cross product and push it down into one, uh, one side or the other. When are we allowed to do this? What are the, the conditions that make it permissible for us to take a selection predicate and push it down into one side of a, of a uh, one side? Okay, so if all of the columns that appear in that expression, in the condition, appear only in R, we can push it down on the left. The same thing holds if, uh, if all of the, the columns in the clause apply only to the right-hand side, we can push it down into the right-hand side. If neither of those is true, we have to keep it in place. So how do we actually figure that out? Um, well, let's start uh, with the observation that we actually need to know what columns are on the left-hand side and what columns are on the right-hand side. So there's a get schema method um, that allows you to figure that out. Um, and since we're testing for uh, membership, uh, we can use a hash set to, to um, speed things up a little bit. Okay. So now we also need, a, so this is how we can get the, uh, the columns from the left-hand side and the columns from the right-hand side. How do we, uh, we actually need a way to get the uh, columns from the expression itself. So here's where things get a little bit uh, a little bit wonkier because you need to be able to go through the entire uh, the entire expression to find all of the columns. Now this uh, this uh, projection uh, this um, what did I call it um, uh, this uh, plan rewrite thing is is kind of nice. It lets me visit all of the nodes of an operator tree, what if we had something similar uh, for, uh, for expression trees? Something that let me visit every single node of an expression tree. So there's a handy little uh, class called expression scan, uh, which is going to allow you to visit every single, or to, to um, hit every single node uh, in an expression tree. Uh, let's see, where are we? So we need some way to figure out what's where. Let's give ourselves... Um, Let's call it so just like the uh, the projection rewrites, you define one function that tells you what you want to do when you hit one node without actually having to, to visit all of, all of the nodes manually. Um, this, uh, this expression cl uh, scan class gives you the ability to uh, define a method for every single, uh, define a method to uh, react to any given column. 
uh, to any given specific type of expression. So for example, I could define a visit method for, uh, for uh, what to do when I hit a column in the expression and keep a linked, uh, keep a hash set of all of the columns that I encounter during my traversal. A little bit of extra boilerplate. Um, and the way that you actually use this um, is to call uh, expression.accept uh, with this expression scan. Uh, it'll do the full traversal, and then it will uh, essentially, w once you've visited every node in the tree, uh, the return value that will contain all of the columns that you've encountered so far. So uh, we have a method to get all of the columns in that particular expression, all of the uh, columns that appear in that expression. So let's see what happens. So um, we have a set containing r.b, s.b, uh, set containing s.c, t.c uh, for those columns. Good. So we're on our way to figuring out what goes on the left-hand side, what goes on the right-hand side. Um, OK, so what's our, what's our condition for something go uh, being allowed in on the left-hand side? Or better yet, what, what's our condition for not being able to push a particular clause down at all? Uh, say again? The selection doesn't exist. So what do you mean by that? Uh, could you expand on that? Which schema? Okay, so if something's, uh, if the left-hand side schema doesn't have, uh, doesn't have um, the attributes that, uh, that appear in that expression, if there's no intersection between the left-hand side attributes and uh, the right-hand side at, uh, and the expression attributes, then we can do something. Okay. So we've got, uh, so we've got potentially four cases here. Either they both intersect, one of the two intersects, the other one intersects, or none of them intersect. Um, so let's enumerate out our cases here. Um, shrink this slightly. All right, so if the columns of the clause that we're looking at intersect with the left-hand side and they intersect with the right-hand side, what are we allowed to do? Let's say here. 
So what uh, t.c and u.c. So t.c comes from the left-hand side, u.c comes from the right-hand side. What can we do in that case? Keep it there. Keep it there. Sure. Uh, so let's... All right, what about if they just intersect the left-hand side, but not the right-hand side? Move it down, into which side? Left, okay. All right, what if they just intersect the right-hand side? Push it down into the right. And what if they intersect neither? Yeah, th then you're, you're very, very happy because uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, so you could either keep it in place, you could, uh, if they don't intersect either, so this is basically a select that doesn't depend on the data. So select true, for example, or select false. Generally, don't really care about this, so it doesn't actually matter what you do. So let's actually keep our, our make our lives a little bit simpler and just push down uh, to the right. Um, okay, so uh, where are we? So let's try compile. Let's see what happens uh, when we compile this. All right, so we've got a uh, cross product between R, uh, between RS that we can push something down to, and we have T and uh, a cross product between that result and T. So what would we expect to be able to push down? So can, uh, can we push down R dot B? Yes. Uh, in fact, we can push it down to the left. Uh, S dot C, uh, C equals T dot C. Well, that's between uh, the result of this cross product and this uh, scan. So can't really do much there. OK, good. So, so we at least have a sense that this is doing something potentially useful. How do we actually make it do, how do we actually make it do something? We're going to actually need to collect each of the clauses that we can push down on the left, each of the clauses we can push down on the right, and each of the clauses that we can't do anything with. So um, one way to do that would be to create an expression to keep track of the condition that we can put on the left-hand side, key, uh, an expression to keep track of the uh, uh, that would go on the right-hand side, an expression uh, for the condition that would uh, stay in place. And initially, we don't actually want any of those to, to get pushed down, so we can set them to null. All right, now there's one other little bit here, uh, one other little bit of utility code that uh, I am just going to copy uh, blatantly here from my notes. And uh, so we basically need some way of combining two clauses together. So they were originally linked by ands. Let's keep them linked by ands. Uh, what we need to do is, uh, but we need to keep track of the case where one of them is null so that we don't actually... Um, so that we don't actually do an and of null and uh, whatever. So null basically means nothing, uh, which by default kind of means true for and. All right. Um, so if we want to keep it in place, we and whatever the existing top condition is with the new clause. Uh, if we need to push it down to the left. Uh, we end it with whatever the left-hand side condition is. And uh, if we need to push it down on the right, we end it with whatever the right-hand side condition is. All right. 
Last step. So now, um, we have taken, bump the lights up a little. So we've taken, is that enough to see the board? Probably not. Um, so we've taken, we've taken this big condition here, A and B and C and so forth, and we've turned it into something that looks a little bit like uh, selection sitting on top of a cross product, and we've turned it into, uh, or at least we've figured out what this uh, first condition is, uh, what the second condition is, what the, uh, what the top condition is, what the left-hand side condition is, what the right-hand side condition is. We actually need to then, uh, so this, this right now is kind of sitting in parts. So we've got R sitting someplace, we've got S sitting someplace, we've got C1 sitting someplace, C2 sitting someplace, C3 sitting someplace. We actually need to take all of these, these pieces and put them back together. So let's start going bottom up. And reassemble the left hand side. So we're going to take whatever condition we had and tack it onto the left-hand side. Of course, there's the possibility that we didn't actually come up with a condition that we could push down to the left-hand side. We have to account for that. And we do pretty much exactly the same thing for the right-hand side. OK, so now we have these pieces reassembled. Uh, oh, and you can't actually see that. I'm sorry. Is there Put the projection low chalkboard? Really? <laughs> um, All right, um, epilepsy warning. Um, anyone, anyone have epilepsy? Okay. Um, all right, so, so we basically here reassembled the, uh, reassembled the left-hand side and the right-hand side, uh, fact, uh, including this uh, selection operator that has condition one selection operator that has condition two. Now we need to uh, go up the stack, reassemble the cross product. Simple, take the left hand side, cross it with the right hand side. Nothing super fancy. And then of course if the top, uh, the condition sitting on top uh, needs to be uh, preserved. Uh, sorry, if there is a condition that needs to go on top of the cross product, then we have to reassemble that as well. Uh, now that we've actually done that, so we either return the cross product if this condition doesn't actually mean anything, or we return a selection sitting on top of the cross product. All right. Let's, uh, let's see how that looks like. So uh, we have our cross product here, project sitting on top of a select, sitting on top of a cross product of a scan and another cross product, and the cross product of two scans. So we'd expect to see, uh, the, in the reassembled structure, we'd expect to see uh, that select of r.b uh, equals s.b pushed down uh, into the left-hand side. And 
would expect to see that. Uh, perhaps if I had saved my file. And there we go. So uh, s.c and t.c were supposed to be uh, up top, Mac up reserved. Uh, but this, uh, this rewrite kind of disassembled uh, the select sitting on top of the cross product, figured out how to optimize it, and then reassembled it back together. Okay. Um, questions so far? Yeah. So... Uh, is there a reason to uh, so the, the question is is there a reason is there ever a reason to restart the iteration uh, if you uh, change something in general um, yes if something changes you may be able to find a better optimization in the case of uh, selection pushdown specifically, and probably most of the optimizations that you'll be working with, um, I, those optimizations either push something further down into the tree, in which case uh, visiting the nodes top down is going to be sufficient to make sure that you, you never miss anything, um, or uh, you're going to be pulling things up further, uh, further up in the tree, in which case bottom up uh, traversal is going to be sufficient. Um, is there a reason to do this recursively, repeatedly, until uh, another uh, fancy word, some of you may recall, uh, until you reach a fixed point? Um, there are definitely situations where you'd like to do that. Uh, for the reference implementation, it doesn't actually do that. Um, none of the optimizations that are in the reference implementation require it. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's definitely there's definitely benefits to doing that. Yeah. All right, so this is basically, uh, this was one example of an optimization that you can uh, perform in, uh, that you can perform. Um, taking a selection, uh, sitting on top of a cross product, disassemble those, and then reassemble them in a slightly more efficient way. Uh, for the purpose of checkpoint uh, two, you're basically going to be required to um, do more complex queries faster. And by more complex, I don't mean uh, structurally complex, I mean complex in terms of data. Uh, so some of you may have noticed uh, that uh, queries, NBA queries five and six, um, have a shorter version, which was part of the uh, experiments, uh, part of the, the benchmarking. And part of the reason for that is that the pies actually can't handle the full cross product in any reasonable amount of time. Um, for checkpoint two, you'll be expected to uh, do that more efficiently. Um, we'll be doing a couple of join queries. We'll be doing a couple of uh, aggregates over joins. And uh, the short version is that uh, nested loop join is not going to cut it anymore. Um, so the two major differences in the reference implementation are a couple of optimi optimizations of this form, uh, where you push down things like selections and, uh, in some cases, projections. Um, another optimization where uh, actually, the other major difference is a hash join. So the reference implementation for checkpoint two has an implementation of the grace hash join, the in-memory hash join. Um, and uh, that's what you are going to be asked to implement and actually stick into uh, your uh, query plans. Any questions?
Yeah. Yeah. So right now there is no such operator. There is a cross product operator. Um, it will be up to you to implement a join, op, uh, some sort of equijoin, uh, hash join, or what have you operator. And actually insert it into the plans that get generated. Um, uh, I'll, I'll note, your, uh, so I've been descri uh, describing um, the project from the perspective of uh, implementing it using the, uh, the Checkpoint 1 solution. If you feel that you are almost at the point where your code works, um, you can either use uh, the bits and pieces of the Checkpoint 1 uh, solution or Basically, the, the checkpoint one solution is there if you want to use it. Um, most of you, I'm guessing, will probably want to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was the recursive element of the code? Uh, the recursive element of the code was that it was recurring at every single node. It's basically applying this transformation once on every single node. I mean, that's recursion. You, you take a small problem, you solve the small problem, replace this with this, and then generalize that uh, to everything else. Yeah? I'm sorry, I think that's kind of spoke. I meant of the code specifically that you wrote. What was the recursive element? There isn't. Uh, the recursion is kind of encapsulated in the uh, in this helper class. Uh, the uh, what is it? The recursion is is uh, it, we, the so plan rewrite basically visits every single node in the tree. It does so recursively. The recursion is more conceptual. Um, what I'm asking you to, to accept is that you don't care how R is implemented. You don't care how S is implemented. You don't care what's sitting on top of it. All you care about is if I have this structure, I can replace it with this structure, and it's going to be much more efficient. That's recursion. Yeah. Other questions? All right. Um, so last word of advice, start early this time, please. <laughs> <laughs>